Once upon a time, Chris called Dan and said, I'm having an idea. When Dan got over his initial shock and horror, he agreed to hear Chris out. Suddenly, a podcast was born, and somehow I was sucking into recording the intro to give them a little bit of legitimacy. And so, here we are. Welcome to the Dan and Chris Save the World podcast. The Dan and Chris podcast has been fortified with six essential vitamins and minerals. Please use only as directed. Be careful operating heavy machinery while listening to this podcast. If you are pregnant or may become pregnant, please consult a physician before listening to this podcast. No animals were harmed in the creation of this podcast. For best results, open your mind and smile while listening. Continued use of this podcast has been known to cause hilarity in certain individuals. Proceed Proceed at at your your own own risk. risk. Should we start the Dan and Chris therapy session? (laughs) (laughs) You know, it's funny that you should mention that because there's been a couple of times where I've been like, um, you know, because, you know, you you and I have talked about this and um, where I'm like, I need I need a therapy session. Dan, we're recording a podcast. (laughs) (laughs) And and here we are. Yes. uh, And here we are. (laughs) You know, it's it's it's, you know, therapy. What is therapy? You're talking out your problems. Right. So what are we doing? We're talking. talking. Might, might be problems, might not be, but we're talking. Yeah. You know. Well, it's, you know, you you and I have been to, to we've been friends for so long. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we've been as long as, oh, as we've been as lo- friends as long as you've been recording. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you always have to watch what I'm doing. I do. I you know. really have to keep an eye on you, you little sneaky bastard, you. I, I throw those in there and, you know, before you know it, we're recording and... <laughs> We're doing a podcast, you know. Oh, that, that, man. that little pause before I said our therapy session because I'm waiting for it to go down to zero to start. That's funny. That is funny. Oh, <laughs> so what were we saying? Well, we're just saying. I was just talking about um, you know how long you and I have known each other. That basically, and then that's a lot of best friends and you know and, and close relationships. You know the, the the really tight marriages and you know girlfriend boyfriend stuff like that. You get to know each other. You get to know a person really really well. Mm-hmm. You know, like it was funny. We were having a kind of a pseudo board meeting a, a little while back, and it was Tanya and me, and I think Laura was still with us at the time. So the four of us were just shooting the shit. And and starts asking me questions, and I'm like, I don't have the answer for that. She goes, Yes, these are Dan, these are questions for Dan, but I can't talk to Dan at the moment because he's busy. So I'm asking you because you know how he thinks. <laughs> oh right, right, yeah. Well, I'm anticipating, and I was fairly close. You, you were you were not far off of you know when you eventually she, she eventually talked to you about it. You were like, Yeah, do this, 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 and this. She's like, Holy shit, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I had prepared her properly. <laughs> Uh-huh. Talk to one of us. You talk to both. At least you get. At least you can get an idea of what the next other one's going to respond. How they exactly? Respond, so. You know, we're different enough that you know what the other person is probably going to how they're going to approach things. But at least you know, we we have a pretty good idea of how the other one thinks. Yes, yes, we do. <laughs> or doesn't think, as the case may be. Well, in sometimes, you know, whatever, whatever <laughs> however it works. Yes, you know. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> how we're going to react. <laughs> hmm. How, how, how the stimuli is going to trigger some th- certain things. You know, if I, if I say a certain thing, I know I'm going to get a response, but sometimes I see it anyways, just, just to get that response. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's how it is. So it is now August 12th. I don't know where the heck the summer's gone because I swear I, it just oof, started. You know, seriously, <sighs> it is crazy. Uh, you know, in, in, Part to me, you know, it's like I, I want this summer. It probably wanted, must be to move faster because I want to get to you know what's happening in a month or so. Right. But the summer is just going by so so fast. Like, what did I do this summer? It is ridiculous. I, I didn't do. I worked. Yeah. Same here. That was it. I, I worked, and yeah. this week I'm sweating, but it's I worked. <laughs> yeah, no, this week is brutal. I I, I had to do um, three lead wipes. Mm-hmm. And none of them were in my area. I was helping like my one coworker. She has knee issues. She, she had knee repair about a year ago, and she's still really unstable. So she can't, you know, kneel down as as. And you know, basically uh, during a lead wipe, we're taking samples from floors, windows, etc. Okay. So you're doing deep knee bends all over the place, mm-hmm. and um, so obviously she could not do that. So I was filling in for her on that one, and then I had to go help one of our newbies who's not certified to be a lead technician yet. Oh. So I'm I'm doing my job, and then I'm helping other people out doing their job, and by, and then I got to make a phone call for this person. And I had to field the phone call for this person. I had to go talk to this person. 
whew, I got I got done by the end of the day. My boss was like, oh my God, thank you so much for you know, filling in as much for, for stepping up and helping out as much as you did. And I go, yep, that's, it's, that's the job. That's helping mm-hmm. each other out. That's the team. But in the back of my head, I'm like, I'm tired. <laughs> but it's nice that your boss recognized it. So that, that's yeah. good. Yeah. No, but, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, you're just part of your job. It's working, working with other, working with your teammates, working with everybody. So it's, yeah, right. That's, that's all part of what it is. Exacto mundo. It's all part and parcel. The whole inspector oh, gig. I have <laughs> phenomenal. No, no, there's not phenomenal cosmic power there. <laughs> <laughs> Itty bit of living space. Yeah. So. so. So yeah. How are you doing? How how are you? It's been a bizarre week. Tell me. Tell well, me about your week. You know, I mean, you you know the the big thing that you know. Our, our friend's uncle passed away, and this, right. is, this is the one who's only five years older than we are. Right. Um, so suddenly, in ch- I mean, he's a friend of ours as well. Yes, he's a friend. Yes, he's. So. You know, we're, we did. We were on. We did theater with him. Yep. <laughs> um. Yeah. So I mean, it was very unexpected. You know, this is I. You know, I, we Facebooked every day, pretty much. You know, we talk. You know, just you know, little, even just a little hi, how are you type of thing every day. Mm-hmm. So it was just kind of you know nice, you know, friendly kind of get the go. So you know and. Uh, it was uh, very unexpected, and it's, I was just in shock, and I still kind of in shock there. I, I don't think I've really been able to wrap my brain around it, honestly. I, I, I went to his Facebook today, you know, and see all the messages, the outpouring, the people, you know, saying, oh, my God, we just heard we were going to miss you. You were amazing. You know, what a great friend. And I'm like, why are we saying this about this guy? You know, he's he, this this ain't right. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was, what, 55? Yeah. 56 at worst? I don't, I don't remember 50, what his birthday 55. was. It, yeah, it, I know he was, he was born in 65. I just wasn't sure when his birthday, birthday was. in December. Okay. So he's definitely 50. I mean, yeah. and, he, you know, and the heartbreaking thing is he was sending text messages to his family saying, yeah, I just got back from the cardiologist. The old ticker yeah, seems I'm, to be doing right. Yeah, and, you know, and then he's gone 12 hours later. It's like, what know, the what hell? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I get, it was just, it, it's crazy. I, I don't, it I mean, is. That, that gets into, you know, don't take any day for granted. Yeah. You know, you, tomorrow's not guaranteed. You, the, you know, people say that so often, tomorrow's not guaranteed, and it's so cliche, but it's so true at the same time. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, wow. Yeah. I mean, I guess I mean, he had COVID. Did he really? I did yeah. not know that. Yeah. And I guess this is a, a, it was a blood clot ultimately, but I think it's complications from COVID. I, guess, I think from okay. what I've heard, possibly, I, I don't know the details, but you know, it's, I, I heard possibly complications from COVID with everything, but mm-hmm. I was like, Oh, you know, but it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. I mean, I was in shock all day Tuesday and I was like, just, it was hard to focus. It was just, you know, hard to just focus because you know, said he's yeah. not much older than we are. No. And you know, it's only five years and yeah, it's so that, that was, I'm trying to remember what happened Monday. Cause something happened Monday too. It's, it's just, this is kind of built on top of it, but I don't remember. Right? I think that just kind of wiped out whatever happened on Monday, <laughs> <laughs> but it's been a slow week. This week has been going on forever. Um, so oh, yeah, I wish I could agree. <laughs> the, it, it, the perception of time is such a, a weird thing because it it's different from person to person too. It's like, for me, for me, it feels like it's been going on forever. I mean, I've been very busy at work and usually when you're busy, it goes by fast, mm-hmm. but for some reason it's been, I've been really busy and it's going by really slow. So it's made it even more painful, you know? So, and, uh, yeah. And I've been working, you know, a lot of these days working late, you know, I, I was on until, you know, from, nine, from like 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. 9 p.m. the other day, you know, kind of thing. Wow. So, um, yeah, so it, I'm, I, I'm ready for the weekend. <laughs> <clears throat> Everybody's working <laughs> for the weekend. Yeah. Do, 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 do. yeah. So anyway, yeah. So it was, it's just live your life. You don't, don't, don't take a day for granted. Nope. You can't, you, know, you just can't. That, I, I always tell my kids I love them every day, you know, whenever I see them, you know, I don't, don't, I don't miss the chance for that. You know, I don't plan on going anywhere anytime soon, but right. we don't, we never plan for this stuff, right? No, no one, no one plans for, well, usually you don't plan for it unless you know you have something terminal or something. Um, I mean, I, I, I watched, I watched the new fantasy Island last night on Fox. Oh yeah. And, and who's, who's, it's Rosalind Sanchez on that one? Yeah. Or? Yes. As, as Ms. Rourke. 
Yeah, the the niece or grand niece of of Mr. Rourke. You know, so they kind of started off with a picture of of him. So that was, you know, uh-huh. you bring a little continuity there. And it was there. You go. It was interesting. I don't know if I'll, if I'll continue watching it, but it was. Did it feel like it had? Uh, what's the best way to describe it? Like twenty first century sensibility, where it has to have like a weird sense of edge, but it doesn't quite fit. Um. No, I mean they tried to have a little bit of the vibe of the old show. Okay. You know, they had the the island. They they took the continuity there with you know with her being the, you know the niece of of you know oh, the, the work. Work. Yeah. Um. You know, I, I do kind of miss tattoo there. You know, I, I miss the plane, the plane. <laughs> did Did she have an assistant? Is there like somebody who is kind of like her wingman there? Like tattoo was for Mister well, Work. So. So the first people were the first people that that came to the island was a a, a news anchor that just wanted to eat, um, and you know, of course, there's more more than that. And then a couple with you know, an older couple, and the the woman had terminal cancer, which was okay. Die. Um, and I, I'm probably not going to watch it, but the the spoiler spoilers, spoilers. It, you know, you know, at the end of the episode, the so they they just wanted to have. A weekend that she that you know the the couple they want to have a weekend that she can live basically, uh-huh. you know because you know she knows she's going to die she's she, she's accepted it but they want just they want one last weekend together and so the island granted them that and ended up that the woman ended up staying on the island and becoming her assistant at, you know oh. so the woman you know because you know the the island they they became young you know so they okay. got to do this and then you know they and you know she's you said you can stay in the island and you can keep you know keep on living or she's basically going to die if she if she left because of, you know terminal right. cancer you know so it's, okay so it's, she got the assistant there it's like that's an interesting way to do it and yeah you know so I mean I had some of the vibe of the old show I, of course I haven't seen the old show in a long time but God, yeah but the, I remember watching it but never quite understanding what really was happening not entirely no I mean it was definitely an well because that was that was on. After love was on after love boat usually it was yeah. later later at night yeah 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 isn't it sad we can tell okay we uh, Saturday night was love boat and fantasy island you know it was <laughs> the love boat, love boat. Soon, soon we'll be making, making another run, run. <laughs> and we just got banned in North Korea <laughs> <laughs> yay. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> Love Boat always had the, the the amazing, a great, good lineup of guests because there were always uh-huh. always people that you almost always people you knew and everything. So it was always fun. Okay, but, but yeah, the yeah the original one it was definitely. I mean, Mister Work. I mean, he. I mean, come on, Con. <laughs> Seriously, how do you argue with that? I mean, no, that's icon. That that character is iconic because of that man. Yeah, and uh, but he. It, it's hard to reproduce that feeling of the island. Yes, you know, that he would bring in, Ricardo Maltaban would bring in. Um, you know, so she has definitely a much different vibe. I'm not saying it's worse; it's just different. Mm-hmm. So it, it's you know, the jury's to out. But I don't know. I just I just watched it last night because I think okay, you have to see what kind of there. stories they put together. Yeah, you, you know what I watched last night? What did you watch last night? I watched the first episode of Disney Plus's new Marvel series, What If. Oh. The animated series, based on the comic book of Marvel, make over Marvel's done several of them over the years. Uh, you know, kind of really taking the the multiverse out for a spin, okay, and asking that question, "What if?" And so the scenario of the first <clears throat> the first episode is that um, what if a single choice changes the universe? Oh. And and so you get the Watcher, Utaro the Watcher, who is this character who shows up throughout a lot of Marvel comic books. Mm-hmm. Usually he, he would show up in the Fantastic Four and, and you knew when Artaro Uta- showed up, you knew something big was about to happen. Some <laughs> shit was about to go down um, because he shows up. Mm. But uh, he asked the question, um, what if? And so the, 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 the decision was they go right back to Captain America, the first Avenger, the movie. And there's Steve Rogers. He's talking to Erskine. They're in the laboratory with with Tony Stark, with not Tony, with um, dad, yeah. Howard Stark. Yeah. You know, and all of and most of the the actors who played the parts actually provided the voices for the characters. The only oh, person wow. who was not present was Chris Evans, hmm. 
who did not lend his voice for Captain America, but Sebastian Stan, Haley Atwell, you know, Stan, Tru- Stan Tucci, um, Bradley Whitford from uh, the West Wing fame played a, a character, uh, a senator character. He, so, because I believe the actor who played the senator uh, was not either not available or has since passed away. I'm not sure because he was an older man. But anyway, um, so the the decision point is, is that there's a moment where this person looks at Agent Carter and says, wouldn't you be more comfortable up in the booth? And she kind of like tilts her head a little bit and she goes, no, I'm fine right where I am. Instead of going up to the booth like she does in the movie, mm-hmm. you know, she gets a little, a little snippy with the guy who's trying to like, oh, woman, get out of the way. And then she's the one who sees the Hydra operative and intercepts him. So he blows off the bomb and starts setting everything in motion, killing Erskine, all that stuff. But in the process, Steve Rogers is wounded. And can't get into the the thing to become Captain America. They're going to lose everything, all of the the all the energy, all the power, all the the, the serum. Everything is all going to get lost if unless they find a way to do something about. It. She jumps into the tank, and instead instead of having Captain America, you get Captain Carter. Wow! And then it's great how they parallel. You know, it's it's not going to be too spoilerific, but they do this parallel of. Uh, they hit a lot of the big notes of of Captain America, the first Avenger, the movie. So they pay some homage to it. But along the way, and I'm not going to give it away because I want people to watch it. Um, but a- along the way, there are differences that happen. Things occur differently, but s- the same nonetheless. So there's there's this, like, it's a multiverse split, but it's not so unfamiliar toward unfamiliar territory it's going in parallel a lot yes and you know but but there are some substantial differences like steve rogers still gets to be a hero and it's kind of cool how he how he gets his chance to be you know and peggy and steve still have their bond okay so but it's really interesting to see the power power dynamic shifts but you can't tell by watching them act with each other Hmm. you know it's peggy and steve still have this wonderful respect for each other even though steve is now the scrawny little guy and peggy's now bigger stronger faster you know, wow. she even comes out of the tank. You know, she's not <laughs> T- Haley, Haley Atwell. She is, boom, hello, ready to go. <laughs> you know? Wow. So it was really, I thought it was a very cool story. I enjoyed it. Hmm. Um, one of the future what ifs that are coming up, if not the next one, is what if when the Ravagers showed up on Earth to kidnap somebody to become Star Lord, it's not Peter Quill, but T'Challa from Wakanda. Oh, wow. So instead of becoming Black Panther, T'Challa becomes Star Lord. That'd be a much different Star Lord, isn't it? That's gonna be interesting, I think. <laughs> so, and I know there's a lot of different what ifs they're gonna they're gonna sail out there, and I'm sure there's gonna be multiple seasons of this one because there were so many what ifs in the comic books, and there were some great stories. Well, that's, it in kind there. of gets into life because life is all yeah. you know. It's all about what you always think about. What if I did this? What if I did that? So it's kind mm-hmm. of neat, neat that they're bringing that into a series and exploring it in the, you know, the Marvel universe or what if this happened, you know? Yep. Exactly. So, yeah. Huh. Yeah. That's I said, taking that you know, a step further, you know, by, yeah, so that by doing that, so yeah, I'll have to check that out. I think you would enjoy it. It's uh, cause I know you're big into the Marvel movies too. So mm-hmm. I think you would really have some fun with this. There's too many shows out there. I know, I know. I was told about that the other day. I was like, there, there was a bunch of guys talking during our D and D game the other night. Oh, I haven't seen this. Oh, I've seen this. Oh, you should see this. Oh, and I'm just making a mental list of what they were talking about. I'm like, holy crap, I'm really far behind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just bookmarked the 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 what if series. Okay, <laughs> there you go. Okay, I'm I'm ready. But yeah, I'm still trying to catch up on Superman and Lois because I, I was watching that. How was that? I, uh, I've been kind of reticent of whether or not well, I want to dive into that one. I think it's been okay. It's been very, it's been interesting, you know, from a Smallville point, you know, back in, you know, back in Smallville and raising their kids kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So it's it's interesting. I, I, I'm not disappointed with it. I'm not going to okay. say it's my favorite show, but I'm not disappointed in it. All right. It's not wowing you, but it's not boring you either. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely, I'm not. I haven't been rushing to watch it because I think they're still doing new episodes. Um, but okay. I, 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 but I finally catch up, caught up. But you know, I went for weeks without watching it. And I was like, oh, maybe I should catch up on that. Mm-hmm. You know, but it's it's definitely I'm enjoying it. I just it's not my you know it's not my all time favorite show, but it's not. Okay. It, again, it's not 
bad in any way. No, that makes sense. It makes sense. I know there's quite a few shows over the years that I've been like, all right, I want to see what's going on here, but it's not like, oh my God, this is the most amazing thing ever. Like, mm-hmm. I uh, discovered on Netflix Shadow and Bone. I don't know. I, th- I think we've talked about that before in mm-hmm. one of our in one of our FC Three Monkey Business podcasts. Yeah. Um, but uh, it, I know it's based on a series of novels. I have not read the novels, but the 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 show has very much given me interest in finding those books so I can read them. Okay. Now the show itself has not bowled me over, but I finished watching the first season, and I'm like, this mm-hmm. is interesting. So it's okay. like your it's like your reaction to Superman and Lois. I'm on I'm on the fifth episode. I, again, it's, mm-hmm. it, so I kind of forgot about it until you, you mentioned it there, mm-hmm. and I said, hey, let's see where where I was because I I, I thought it was interesting, but it, it wasn't. It didn't grab you, but I liked the characters. Mm-hmm. The story wasn't going, oh, my God, Chris, you must watch this. You must binge this. Because I would watch an episode a day. As soon as mm-hmm. I finished watching an episode, I'd go about my business. Yeah. But then I'd come back to it later and want, want to want to see another one. But the characters and the actors who were playing them were a very interesting group of people. I, I think so. It's just they're not – something is – I don't know. Maybe I'm just getting watching too many shows or something. But it just, Yeah, like, we yeah. might be just going show fatigue. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe I don't know, but it was yeah, it, it wasn't keeping me there constantly. Like I need to see right. what's going on next. It's like, oh, I'll get to it. I'll get around to it. Yeah. It's, it's more of, of that kind of thing versus some other shows, which I just okay, I have to I have to watch the next one now. I don't care if it's midnight and I haven't been up since I've been up since six a.m. I have to watch it now. <laughs> <laughs> or, I haven't found a show that has been binge worthy in such a long time. Like I have to have to have to watch everything oh. now. I haven't watched, found a show like that in a while. I watched something recently. I don't remember what it was now. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I, I watched something that was good that I, I really enjoyed, but I don't remember what it was. I, I got through Kevin Smith's uh, Masters of the Universe He-Man thing. Oh, yeah. Which was shockingly short. It was only five episodes. Mm-hmm. And it did, that was definitely you know a lot of fun to watch. It was interesting. Yeah. I yeah, you get the. I don't know. I, I don't remember what I was watching, but oh, I was. Yeah, um, no. I know. It's just like it's so. It's you know the way we consume entertainment is so weird and wild nowadays. It is. I mean, it's it, just so hard to keep up with everything. Well, I mean, the last couple of weeks, I was, I was. I, whenever the Olympics are on, I'm always watching the Olympics. Yep, we talked about that last week. Yep. So I was. That that was. It's sad to see all the empty stands, but overall, you know, all things considering, I think they did a. It was okay. You know, mm. the, the the coverage could definitely have been better. Um, yeah. And I was reading some postings on it about how you know, NBC needs to get with the times and and you know allow things to go like on you know do some TikTok worthy clips of this and that and you know trying to spread it around. You get the more excitement going and um, you know, but you know. For what you know, I was watching mostly just watched NBC. I didn't go to the other ones because it was hard. It was hard to find other stuff on like Peacock Plus and stuff. They had a lot of stuff there. Mm-hmm. Peacock, not Peacock Plus, just Peacock, I guess. Um, but they had a lot of stuff there. But it was it wasn't easy to always to to get to it. Okay. And so I think they just you know when Winter Olympics comes around in less than a year, um, <laughs> they need to up the game there for that. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. The next Olympics is only in 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 February. Right, the Super Bowl is going to be during the Super Bowl is going to be during the Olympics. Yeah, which is bizarre. Which has happened before? Has it? Has it? Mm-hmm. Okay, it happened before. I want to say because usually it's like right before, but they mm-hmm. they moved it back this year because of they the NFL extended their season or something like that. They had a seventeenth game, so I it's, thought it's, I heard it's about it a, happening before. It might have been, but it was a week later than it was than it originally was going to be, which is mm-hmm. the, that brings it into the Olympic territory, I guess, or more into it. Weird. So because the NFL decided they need more games, so like, yeah, that's going to be an interesting day when that's on and they're doing Olympics and stuff. <laughs> well, maybe they'll learn their lesson. Although I doubt it. You never know. Yeah, but still, I, I, I but I enjoy watching the Olympics. I enjoy watching the sports, anyways. Even if the coverage wasn't the best, I, I enjoy watching the sports. Even watching some odd ones, kind of things you don't normally see. So it was, it was, it was neat, and we, it, it kind of interesting that one of the smallest countries, what is it, the this country with thirty something thousand people, won three medals for the first time ever. You know, so you know, one medal per for ten thousand people in the country. <laughs> 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 if 
but yeah, so it was, it was, um, it was neat. I enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, now that Olympics are over, I can catch up on other stuff. <laughs> yeah. Here's, here's, you know, I'm, I, I made my pledge to start reading books again because I've been mm-hmm. bad about that. We've talked about that in, yeah. in the past on our I'm, podcast. You're going to read foundation in the new year. Yes. I'm going to start the foundation series. I'm going to start the Asimov books in the new year. Yep. I actually, that, that one book that I wanted to start reading with, mm-hmm. I had it in my hand and I was sitting in my chair right here in my desk with my feet up and I, I got half the first page in and then apparently I passed out. <laughs> oh, apparently I passed out because oh, at that point I'm like, I remember, I remember waking up kind of like snapping too. And, and I had my, my head hanging forward. Mm-hmm. And I was just, now my neck hurts because I was oh, sleeping yeah. at a weird angle and all, and I was so discombobulated and I'm, and I, but I, but I tried, I had the book in my lap. I had a cup of tea, you couldn't cup, make my, a page, Chris. my tea had gone cold, the, I couldn't make a full page. And I'm like, <laughs> wow, I am so pathetic. This is amazing. I am so uh, absolutely pathetic, <laughs> but you know, we'll figure it out. Yeah. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Audiobooks, audiobooks are good. You know, the thing about audiobooks is I really have to hunker in and listen to them, right? Mm -hmm. And so if I get distracted, it doesn't hold the same sway for me. And with the way my work has been lately, that's my only chance to really do audiobooks would be when I'm at work, driving around in the car. Mm -hmm. And I just, I can't put the focus into it. Okay. I can't because I'm so busy doing other things, everything else, you know, doing the work of the city. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I get, I get most of my listening and run, running, so you know. I'm just... Oh, here, here, the, you know, I'm not invading any any HIPAA law. I'm going to make some vague um, uh, allusions to something, but I recently got a complaint from a particular person who had been in the media on and off. Um, this person was uh, an elected official. Mm-hmm. Uh, that wound up in a very compromising disgraceful position and was asked to, well, it wasn't asked, but basically played with the rules a lot until they finally just said, okay, we're taking your job away from you. Mm -hmm. So this person is a, is a local media sensation for all of the wrong reasons. Okay. And did I not realize that I did not know this person actually lived not only in my neighborhood, but is now in my work zone. Oh, and is one of my constituents and had a, had a complaint about one of their neighbors. Oh, and I, so tomorrow I have to call this person and speak to them directly. <laughs> and this person has, on, on a couple of occasions now, has run for city council. So their signs are all over the neighborhood. <laughs> Even though, you know, I have to be very honest, nobody's really, ta- well, no, I can't say nobody because this person got a lot of votes in the last primary. Um, but the long and the short of it is that very few people take this person seriously yeah. because of their reputation. And I happen to be one of the biggest proponents of not taking this person seriously. <laughs> so it's kind of weird that I'm going to have to like stand and look him in the eye and be like, yes, how can I help you? <laughs> it's yeah, like, well, oh my God. <laughs> oh, how did I get so lucky? <laughs> well, and you're going out and visiting houses and you're going to yeah. come across fun stuff like that every so often, huh? Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. I've had, you know what? We Since we've redesigned and realign some of our work areas and we've gotten a couple of new inspectors and my seniority has kind of gotten solidified. My case count has been dropped. And, you know, a lot of my cases got spread out to other people mm-hmm. who were now in my areas. Um, and it's given me an opportunity to really be on top of my workload. And yeah, it gives me a chance that to last let, time. Yeah. yeah. It's, I've really been, I can't say enjoying it, but it's definitely been more satisfying, mm-hmm. you know, but it's also giving me an opportunity to really unfurl the customer service skills because I'm no longer, I have to talk to this person, talk to this person, talk to this person. I can talk to this person and focus on this person in front of me right now. I don't have to go running off to 16 different calls. Mm-hmm. Today was a bit busier than I was, than I wanted it to be, but yeah. you know, and uh, I got a chance to uh, a neighbor who just saw the shirt and the badge and said, excuse me, are you the, the inspector? I said, yep, I'm, you know, new to the area. This, this, you know, here's who I am. I handed my card. Mm-hmm. Do you got a minute? Absolutely. What, do you, what can I help you out? How can I help you out with? And they got a chance to talk and be like, okay, here's a concern. Here's a concern. And I'm writing notes. I go, you know what? I could do something about that. 
Yeah. And here's, here's what I need you to do. Here's what I'm going to have you do. Oh, I never get anywhere with that. I said, here's the thing though. When you make the call now, the message is not going to go to anybody but me. <laughs> and I'm telling you that I'm going to do something with it. And he's like, oh, I like this. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> see, see, yeah. see, here we go. <laughs> well, that, 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 that kind of gets into, you know, being out in the neighborhood and, and showing your face. Like they're saying like, for, right. they want, you know, police used to be more like that, being out there and being part of the people versus, mm -hmm. you know, so you're trying to, you know, you're, you're doing your part and. You, Don't be you, us against them. Right. Just being, just, you're able to slow down a little bit and to give that extra bit for, you know, your job and to let people know they're being heard and whatever. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, that's a big, that's a big part of life. I mean, we're such a insulated society these days. Yeah. Yeah. You very know, much it's so. It's a very touchy feely society. You don't want to say the wrong thing and do the wrong thing. And you're afraid to talk to somebody because you don't do that. And we don't, we just can't talk anymore. You know, I, I just, we, you know, every year, you know, I don't know if you probably do something like this too, but, you know, went to our non-harassment training and this and that. And, oh yeah, you know, what you, you know, and it's like, boy, we are really, you know, don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. We are very, a don't do it society. Yeah. You know, and, and unfortunately it takes you off the rails because you're like, well, what can I do? Right. Nothing. Exactly. You can't you know, do anything. Yeah. And that's why, you know, I, I. I, I like the people I work with. I've known them for a while at this point, and you know, we I, I know we know where our limits are and everything. We know which are you know known limits really, um, you know. But you, you know the people. But you know, if you meet someone new, it's like okay, well, how do you integrate them into your stuff without you know saying anything that might offend them, type of thing. You know, we're so we're so it seems like we're so easy to offend, and so I, I don't know. It's it 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 bothers me, and I don't know what to do about it, type of thing. You know, and yeah, well, that's why we have this podcast is so we can at least air our, our thoughts out, you know, somewhere along the line, we come up with ideas. I mean, the unfortunate thing is, is that we're, we're two guys and we need a lot more people on our side to, to kind of help us get the point across. But, you know, we can, we can at least make ourselves, we can at least make ourselves feel better by talking about it. You know, and yeah, but I mean, it's like, it goes on with the thing. Don't take anything that people say personally. It kind of, it's, you know, don't, especially if it's somebody who doesn't know you, don't take what they're saying personally, mm -hmm. you know, don't, don't get so touchy feely about anything that, you know, someone says, Oh, you know, Chris, you're tall, you know, and then get offended by that type of thing, you know, well, and because, yes, you know, yes, you know, I, am. I, you know, or, you know, it's just, it's, you know, that, that's kind of a silly one, but you know, it's, it, it, we're, how, why are we, do we learn that growing up that if someone says anything that you're, you get defensive, you get, you know, or, no, or... I think society kind of taught itself that one over the recent past couple of decades. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to malign the politically correct wave that occurred over the past 20, 25 years mm -hmm. because it was for a reason. And at its purest un, undistilled form, politically correct has a point because there are several times where, I mean, we're even seeing it to this day where somebody will casually throw off a comment or throw off a, an observation and it's offensive. Mm -hmm. You know, you, we, we have, we have a large swath of our society and I'm even included because, you know, you and I were born and raised in the seventies. Mm -hmm. So we see what was funny. We, you and I, we went, we talked with Tanya and Billy about Mel Brooks movies, Mel Brooks mm -hmm. movies, acknowledging the fact that these movies probably could not be made in this, this day and age, even though Mel was being satirical, outright satirical and making commentary about what was going on. Nobody would get the humor because they were too busy being wrapped up in the references. they would all be offended by it versus. Exactly. And, and so here we are, I mean, we're, we're in a cusp, of, we're in a watershed, era of, of our society right now. We're in the watershed era where everything up to this moment has been leading to this moment where sensitivity needs to be kind of ingrained, uh, you know, and, and understanding and appreciating and accepting. And what's interesting to me is all these people who are so resistant to that, they don't understand how they are perpetuating all of the all of the crap that has been hurting people all along. 
you know, there's a, there, there are people who can like, uh, like you get an old school, Juno, no, shut up. Nobody asked your opinion just yet. You can go ahead and you can talk to Uncle Dan later. Mm-hmm. She's, oh, 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 oh. she's woofing. Mm-hmm. Jules is she Jules has friends coming over tonight for yeah. a movie. All right, where was I? Look at let's, let's look at it. It's, it's gonna be a stereotypical thing. And if I offend anybody, I apologize because I'm trying to shed spotlight on a on a very important situation. Get your old old school Paisan Italians who would go to you know the old school Ron Cones on the corner of Parkway and, and Lyle, and they would sit there and they would, you know, cacarons, they'd just be ch- chatting and solving all the world's problems and talking about this guy and this guy and this guy. And they didn't, they didn't think anything of, you know, of the African-American guys who were, you know, walking in to, to order lunch or whatever. They just, they're fine with them. All right. But the terms they would use to describe them, mm-hmm. you know, they would call it, well, you know, I'm not even going to repeat. I mean, nothing, yeah. it would be nothing derogatory. There's no N words involved, but the things that the Italians used to call the African Americans. And it was to them, there was like, ah, they're, they're just, a, they're just a bunch of guys. I look at them that this is what they look like, whatever, mm. you know, this, this, these are the people. And, you know, you, something like that. And if you call those old Italians out on it, they would be like, what? <clears throat> we like them. They're good guys. They work hard. You know, we, we're not insulting. Yeah, but you are insulting them. And they they are not comfortable with you talking like that. Mm-hmm. So you've got politically correct is bringing awareness, but then unfortunately, like everything else in America, there is such an extreme aspect to it that the extremists have made the other extremists. It's there's the war, you know. Mm-hmm. You've got the people who are so dead set to not change, and the people who are dead set to make everybody change, and they're butting heads, right? They're butting heads so hard. And they're not understanding that they're – I know I'm rambling through this. I know there's a no, point. Okay. There's something I'm thinking about. It's it's the desire to just be more accepting mm-hmm. and to understand and to be appreciative of everybody else having a different approach to the world. You know, homosexuals. And we can't even – I can't even say minorities anymore because guess what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Caucasians, we're becoming the minorities. Right. And rightfully so. We deserve it. Mm-hmm. We deserve it because it's our turn. You know, everybody else should, a lot of people should have the opportunity and that's where equality comes. Mm-hmm. You know, we're, when everybody else feels like they can be as important as, as we were throughout most of history. Yeah. You know, let, let everybody else bring it up, bring the level up so that it's all nice and even equity, equity, mm-hmm. It is more important than equality. I think that's the the, 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 the thing that I heard. I can't remember if there was a really good way of saying it. And, and, and I, I'm, there were some smart people who put some def, def, definition in on it. Um, where was I going with this? Oh my God. I just started rambling. I had an idea. I had a thought. Equity, um, equity, equality means each individual or group of people is given the same resources or opportunities. Mm-hmm. Equity recognizes that each person has different circumstances and allocates the exact resources and opportunities needed to reach an equal outcome. Perfect. Yeah. The, 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 the little graphic that I saw was equity is everybody had the same kind of stool to try and look over the fence to watch the baseball game. But that for some people, that stool was not enough to get them high enough, right? Mm-hmm. You know, like you still had the small kid trying to stand. He's standing on the same size of stool as, it, as the tall kid next to him. So the tall kid can see just fine, but the small kid can't st- still can't see over the fence. Equity is making sure the tall kid can see, the short kid can see, the medium height kid can see. Everybody's got an opportunity so that they can all have an equal shot, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I don't. What's boggling my imagination is I don't understand why people are fighting that so hard. What do you lose by giving somebody else an opportunity to see some see something over the fence? Right. If I we're can not, keep with that analogy. We're not taking away from you where yeah. it doesn't mean it doesn't mean less rights for you. It means equal rights for everybody. Everybody should have that shot. You know, and and I the, like the with masking, mm-hmm. and how you've got the anti vaxxers and the anti maskers, who I think are some of the st- stupidest people on the planet, in my opinion. Anti masking is really stupid because it is so anything in your body. You're just putting something I over your face for a little just while. Just don't get it. <laughs> I mean, I saw a TikTok today where where old man Murphy, seventy six, this guy I follow, he's hilarious. Mm-hmm. 
um, he did this great pantomime where he took on the two sides. He was the guy who's laying out the rule, and then there was the you know the magaite anti masker on the other side. And mm-hmm. he's like, yeah. So in your car, you need to put your seatbelt on. Hey, no problem. Hey, no sh- no shoes, no shirt, no service. Hey, no problem. Hey, you know when you're doing this, you got to do this. Hey, no problem. Hey, when you're here, you got to wear a mask. Hey, my rights. Well, you can't do that to me. And it just it's so crystal clear. Yeah. You know, it's exact, you know, you have no problem with everything else. Why do you have a problem with this mask thing? Yeah. And do these people not realize that if they had been behaving themselves all along and helping us out all along, this would have been done by now. This would have been curtailed by now. Instead, more people are getting sick. More people are getting are dying. Uh, we have the Delta variant. We're going to probably have what comes next, the Gamma Lambda variant. I don't know. <laughs> That's going to happen. Mm-hmm. It's going to happen. Yeah. You know, and then, the, well, it's not that bad. Well, excuse me, but fuck you. People are dying. That's bad. Hospitals in Florida are, are overwhelmed already. Are, yeah. You know, it's uh, the vaccine. The vaccine is doing what it's supposed to. Vaccines not doesn't prevent it. No, nope. vaccines don't prevent disease; they reduce. But that's the closed-mindedness of these people. They're yeah. like, "Well, if you have the vaccine, you're 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 immune. You don't you know." No, that's no. not the point. But the ninety <sighs> percent of the people who are hospitalized have not been vaccinated. Over ninety, mm-hmm. you know. So mm-hmm. you, the, your odds of getting it bad are a lot worse but, if you don't but, get but vaccinated. The best I saw: this person got dressed down hard in front of me. And mm-hmm. I loved it. I, I, I tried to absorb as much of it as I could. Um, so this guy's like, well, my rights, I'm being oppressed by all this nonsense. And the guy looked him dead in the eye and said, man, I'm black. Don't talk to me about oppression. <laughs> he goes, my best friend's son is gay. And 10 years ago, he could have been lynched in one of the southern states. And nobody would have called that a hate crime because he was gay. Mm-hmm. Right. Tell it. Ask him about oppression. Talk, go find your, your Japanese best friend and ask him what his grandparents' experiences were during World War mm-hmm. II. Then tell me about oppression. He goes, you're at being asked to put on a fucking mask. Right. You pansy. That, that's not the word he used. Yeah. <laughs> you it, know? It, it's, so. it's ridiculous, the vehemence there. I mean, no one likes wearing a mask. I, mean, I don't. Yeah, no, we don't. But I it's such no a small thing it. to do. You know, it's not right. It's not going to guarantee nothing's going to happen, you know, but it's a small mm-hmm. thing to do to, to help protect yourself and others a little bit. You know, it adds a, a little extra level of protection. You know, like I said, it's not going to be 100%. Nothing is. Yeah. But it, it, it'll... It'll improve the odds, like you know, somewhat. You know, I don't know. And then much... they'll, and then they attack the vaccine. Well, they came up with it too quick, and it's experimental. Look, let me explain to you what I said to this guy. Let me say, let me tell you what I said to this guy. I said, you really, do you really think that the hundreds of labs all around the world that are sharing information, that are sharing knowledge, just suddenly decided to be like Janine in Ghostbusters where they're like, they're sitting around doing nothing. And then all of a sudden the alert comes through and they slam down the bell. We, we got one. No, they've been working on stuff like this. This is their career. This is their lives to understand these things, to be able to anticipate these things. And the moment they get the information they need, they're going to be able to jump on these things. I can guarantee you all of the labs around the world that started working on the the, the, the vaccines had a foundational baseline to work with for, for etymology or whatever the, the, the immunology, whatever that is, um, or the turn. They had all of that foundational work in place. They knew the protocols they had to follow. They had, they knew the tests they had to do. They, they knew to, they knew the information they needed. So to start looking for that information, mm-hmm. you know, and, and to, to be able to turn, it's not like you have Dustin Hoffman and Cuba Gooding Jr. An outbreak, two guys with Rene Russo coming up with the vaccine on their own. <laughs> no, there were hundreds, if not thousands of professionals around the world working on this at the same time. Yeah. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt that the speed run is going to be a good idea. You know, they've been working on this type of vaccine since like 2003. I mean, you seriously, you know, the, this whole, um, you know, the whole, this whole type of well, you know, SARS so, mechanic. Yeah. This, you know, this, the, the, the they, no, so it's not brand new. So let's go ahead and make our lesson for the day debunking the crap out of everything. Let's do that. 
Okay. Because you and I, we're not professionals, no. but we are, we are, we have common sense and we can look for information. So let's start with the basics. The mask is part of the process. Mm -hmm. It's part of the system, it right? Social distancing. <laughs> exactly. Social distancing is part of it. Mm -hmm. The vaccine is part of it. The occasional need to quarantine is part of it. Now, when you put all of these things together, you create a system that creates a level of protection and management. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, you don't, if you feel like you're an exposure hazard, you don't go to a, a, a room full of 5,000 people and hope for the best. Right. You know, the vaccine is part of it. It's not a hundred percent, but you give it the opportunity to work by doing other things, right. by making sure that everybody, the more people that get vaccinated, the stronger it gets. Tell me where polio is. Polio in the, in does not, books. Yeah. in the history books, because everybody did their part. Mm -hmm. Smallpox, because everybody did their part. They weren't political. And that's the thing is that freaking moron made mm -hmm. it political. Mm -hmm. He made it political by saying, oh, it's a Democrat hoax. It's a Democratic hoax. I'm going to continue to be divisive. It's I'm going to continue. It's a China virus. You know, it's yeah. A, you, you, you know, know what? Come on. Come on. You know, if he'd had just a single brain cell in his freaking head, My, just a single one, and realized that is, maybe. He does, he does, but he uses his power for evil. Yeah. <laughs> he, uses it for, uh, he, uses, he uses it for himself. You see, yeah, he's completely and utterly 100% selfish. He doesn't give a rat's ass about anybody but yeah, him. I won't say he's Ivanka. evil, but he's, he's, uh, he's all, it's all about him. Yeah. Every, everything he's yeah. done is all about him. How can I make so, myself better? So the fact that the vaccine came out as fast as it did is actually a sign that the professionals knew what the hell they were doing and had access to the information they needed. Right. It is justification of all the work they've been doing. Secondly, no, there is no freaking microchip in the vaccine <laughs> because no chip small enough to get through one of those needles would actually be receptive within a dam's worth of, of, of distance. Right. All right. Also, I will point to the fact that several military friends of mine have pointed out that, which I have commented on the past, mm -hmm. that they had the top of the line military grade GPS systems while they were in the outbacks of Afghanistan and the Pentagon did not know where they were <laughs> half the time. Okay. Yep. So if you have these great military grade pieces of equipment, that do not work. How do you think the chip is going to function? And oh, by the way, the corollary to the whole microchip conspiracy theory, I'm sorry, but you're not interesting enough to track. And if you have a cell phone, at these things. if you have a cell phone, if you have a portable device, if you have a tablet, a computer, if you have an online presence whatsoever, they know everything they need to know about you already. Mm -hmm. They do not need to put a chip in your arm. You're not a dog. You're not worth it. Get over yourself. You're not that important. Okay. The chip is so, always really silly. That was the, that was oh, the silliest my. thing. That was God. And then you got the people who are like, "Oh, this is just a this is a this is a forced uh, youth you, they're euthanizing. This is all uh, um, mm. eugenics. This is a eugenics program. They're going to kill people off with the vaccine, and they're going to breed what's left." Um, and I'm like, "I'm sorry, but you know what? The people who are not getting the vaccine, who would be the quote unquote ones that are left, are not the cream of the crop of society." No. Okay, you were not the ones that I would want to build a future society on. I'm going to tell you that straight up, guys. If you're insulted by that, guess what? Don't care. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so yeah, it Ugh. is time to be part of the solution rather than being the problem. Hear that, Florida this, and Texas? <laughs> this situation would have been done this spring. It should, when it the vaccine started, over the summer we were looking so good over the summer. It Everything over the summer was looking great. We were starting to breathe easier, and then these numb nuts has let this just keep coming. Mm -hmm. When everybody who wanted to be part of the solution jumped in and said, "Okay, great," and they didn't anticipate that the other half of the country was going to be fucking heads up their asses. And the fact that it literally was, you know, half the country has not is against it, and kind of, you know, mm -hmm. they, or they don't want to do it, or whatever, whatever reasons they haven't done it. Uh, you know, it's yeah. I, I was looking forward to things getting better. Yeah, you know, and this is this is potentially going to affect us. Mm -hmm. You know, in September yeah. with our event. No idea what's going to happen. You know. So yeah, I'm going to uh, Billy Joel on Saturday. 
two days. Good. You get to let me know how that goes. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes. Um, Anchor Con is uh, another week after that. So we get to see how that. Are comes. you going to that? No, it's just Tanya and Anna. Okay. So we get to see how that one runs, you know, in, in this new uh, heightened uh, state of affairs here. But yeah, I don't. I have no idea what's going to happen in September for us. I mean, I'm hoping that. You know, I would expect a miracle wouldn't be necessary at this point to make anything happen for us at this point. I, and it makes me so sad right mm. now to even think that way. Like, oh my God, as much momentum as we've been building up, if we have to sidetrack it because oh, Delta has, has entrenched itself and people are not doing anything about it, that would be crushing. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, I mean... I don't know what I want to say because, you know, it's masking is pretty much a guarantee at this point. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whether we can do proof of vaccine is questionable, but a possibility. Hey, there are a lot of events and organizations that are starting to do it. Mm -hmm. And there, they, one of them, I can't remember what it was, but one of them got legally challenged and it held up. Yeah. So the law is on our side if we say you need to show proof of vaccination. So that numb nuts who mm -hmm. like you don't know anything about HIPAA, you can fuck off too while you're at it. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what his his name was, but he can we, go we, ahead we and bite the big anyways, ones as far as yeah. I'm concerned. Yeah, that's, he can bite the big it's ones. Not as as a I'm HIPAA concerned. thing. It's, no, it isn't. Your school schools can ask you to go to school. You know, you get, yep. you have your, Seriously, your to vaccine. get into school as a kid or to go to back to, to college, you have to have this whole list of vaccines that are up mm -hmm. to date. Why is this one suddenly different? Right, because it's political. You know? Because it's been politicized. That's, that's, the, only oh, reason. that's the part that drives me absolutely it's bonkers. The only reason. It's, you know, Politics has no point in this. No, no point in this whatsoever. And you get Rand Paul from Kentucky trying to try to tell Dr. Fauci that Rand Paul is smarter than Dr. Fauci. Please screw off. Now look what's going on in the Florida governor there. Jeez, DeSantis. Oh, DeSantis. Talk about worst human being on the planet. I don't understand the blindness of this. I mean, why? You have, the, these people are all following the numb nuts' train. You play to the base now. It's not about loyalty to an idea or to an ethos or an ideology it's ideal to a person you mm -hmm. have to be loyal to their Fuhrer over here mm -hmm. and and you 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 kiss his ass kiss his ring and play to the base which means appease the morons mm -hmm. but you he only has as much power as you give him and they're giving him this power so i don't yeah they are you know and i don't know why it's the saddest thing because he's the most powerful loser in america yeah. You know, and, and lies, lies upon lies upon lies. And it's like, don't you ever get tired of hearing yourself speak? No, nope, yeah. no, he doesn't. Never mind. Give up on the election. I mean, the pillow guy, he failed. He failed on his thing there. Oh, my God. That was amazing. <laughs> and then then apparently he got he like got up and ran out of his own symposium when he found out that the Dominion lawsuit mm -hmm. was going to go forward. Yep. <laughs> and he was about to get hit for a billion dollar lawsuit. Mm hmm. He was part of it. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know the 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 place wasn't exactly packed. No. <laughs> <clears throat> and and a lot of the folks who showed up to to debunk him, he gave them the information that he had been given, and it was all garbage. Mm -hmm. That's what the surprise. reports I'm starting. Yeah, what a surprise! It's all encrypted garbage and whatnot, and it's like if this it, doesn't make any sense. If it was real data, that it, it would have been out. I mean, yep. They've had how long now to provide yep. this this. In the, you know, under indefeatable, whatever, uh, undefeatable uh -huh. pr proof that the election was stolen, but where we yeah. have not seen one lick of it. You know, Arizona no. is a laughing stock with what they're doing. With that, with that, that third party audit. Oh my gosh, that complete disaster. That is just ridiculous. They've not found anything. They found there's nope. a handful, a handful of questionable ones or something, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Which but that's that was a that was within the margin of error for right. any other exactly. election. There's no thousands and tens of thousands or whatever. I don't know. I don't. Mm -hmm. I, I don't get people. Why? How can they? Uh, again, like you said, they're just blind belief. Blind blind faith is dangerous. It is. It really is. Blind I mean, faith. blind faith is also a really good band from the '90s. But still, no, <laughs> blind faith. That was uh, um, Stevie Winwood and his supergroup. That was from the 60s and 70s. 
really good, really good band. But anyway, um, but but blind faith in a, in in politics and in in society is not good, no, no. not good. Did you hear about the pastor down in Tennessee who did the whole hellfire and brimstone speech? telling people that if they come into his church with masks, he's going to excommunicate them and they're going to go to hell. No, I didn't hear that one. And then he died seven days later from COVID. Oh, jeez. You know, <laughs> like, oh I, I, I don't want doing... anyone to die, but I mean, yeah, you're, 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 you're pushing it here. You know, yeah. it's, I mean, especially if you're in a hot spot or something, you're, you're pushing your luck. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, this is a serious, it's not a political, this, this virus is not political. It it does whatever it wants. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't care if you're liberal, conservative, Democrat, right. Republican, left, right, center, doesn't what care. You're all you can, they can all skip over you. Yeah. I mean, if you're a Democrat. I'm going to, I only go after Democrats. This is my, the Democratic virus, you know, kind of, <laughs> no, it's, it's not that way. It's Yeah. <laughs> And we have, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't understand people. I don't, I don't. It's insanity. People have got to wake the hell up. They Mm -hmm. have to wake up. It is not going to hurt you to be part of the solution. Nope. It is not going to hurt you to be part of the solution. I, I have, you and I have been vaccinated now for what? Three, four months? Somewhere around there, yeah. Yeah. It's August, three, five. Yeah. I got mine in May. In early June. So those were when I got my two shots. So I've been, I've been vaccinated for two, three months at this point. I I have not grown a second head as much as that would be fun. I have not yeah, I shrunk. I have not I have not <laughs> mutated. I I not I, I do not have anything going on with me at this time. Yeah. You know, stop trying to debunk. 165 million people in this country have gotten it. It's not experimental. <laughs> well, what about this? Well, what about the <clears throat> Shut up. Yeah. Just do it. Get it done. Yeah. Stop whining. Stop pissing and moaning. Yeah, I've had my, I got my Be first part of the shot. solution. I got my second shot on April 11th. So, yeah, I've been for four months. Be part and, of the solution. Yes. That and, is your lesson for the day. Be part of the solution. You know, it, it, well, here's, here's an interesting kind of sidebar to the conversation. The other day, my son came home to visit for a little while, and he had one of his dear friends with him. And... <clears throat> we made a light talk, you know, there was a light reference to politics. And here's a 17 year old girl sitting in my living room talking about how she's Republican. Okay. Okay. Why? And so she started going through the list of reasons because she's watched her father build a business. And so as a small business owner, she sees this, 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 and this. Okay. That got my attention. Mm -hmm. And, and she goes, and I really don't like any of this nonsense above, you know, she goes, I don't, I don't adhere to any of this nonsense, you know, of this crap, you know, I don't adhere to this. I don't adhere to that. You know, I don't think the Democrats are right here, here and here. And she had a reason. And I'm like, you know what? I completely and utterly respect that. I will not try to talk you out of being a Republican because you are doing it for the right reasons. I said, I would prefer to have people like you in the party, especially at your age at 17 years old. Because and as you grow up and, and as you, how it should be, yeah. Yeah. She wants to become a small business owner down the way. And so if she she is looking at it from a business aspect and she's looking at practicality mm-hmm. and she's, you know, she, cause she has gay friends, then she feels they should get married. She doesn't understand how religion is supposed to be part of politics. Mm-hmm. She just said, okay, taxes, business, uh, business support, et cetera, et cetera. These are why I vote for these people. And this is why I support this side. That I respect. You mm-hmm. go right ahead. You know, and if you and I, if you ever want to debate the issues with me, you go right ahead and, and take me on and I'll be happy to listen to what you have to say. And that will make a better society when people who have differing opinions can talk to each other. I know I've made references to the gentleman who I have on Facebook mm-hmm. from, from I can't remember, I think it's Virginia, uh, but Mr. Fitch. Mm-hmm. You know, we are from two different sides of the aisle, but we talk to each other. We answer each other's questions as honestly as possible. And then we thank each other for the discussion. Even if we don't agree, we don't, we don't change each other's minds. We may be frustrated, but we go, Hey, thanks. That was a great conversation. And, you might, and you might say something that might change your mind or, or might, yeah. yeah, you know, might, you know, and we do, we try, we, we defend our positions and we explain our thoughts and you know, you, you move on from there, mm-hmm. you know, you move on from there, you know, at no point do I feel threatened by this guy and I don't feel the need 
to, 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 I'm not going to insult him. He's a good guy. He's a decent dude. He just wants to go fish and take care of his family mm -hmm. and see the world a little bit better place. Cool. We see the same thing. We yeah. just come at it from different angles. I can right. respect that. But yeah. when you when you come at me with sarcasm and insults and belittling and the gaslighting and in and, and the, you know, the innuendo that, you know, I'm, I love it when I'm told that liberalism is a mental disease. Mm. Liberals are just, they have mental disease. Oh, that's my favorite. Yeah, that's a, that whole you know, why am I supposed yeah. to, why am I supposed to, oh, you, you want me to actually fall in line with you then? That's going to convince me to believe your way. Fuck you. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. We, we got to be yeah. able to talk. We got to be able to listen. We have to be able to meet in the middle. Mm-hmm. And you, and even if it's meeting in the middle long enough to shake hands and say, hey, we don't agree, but you know what? Good on you, mate. I hope you're doing well. And you go about your business. Yeah, but, you know, it, it, at our level, that's okay. But in the, in the politics level, you have to get in. Okay, so what's really best for – what can we agree on what's best, best for, for everybody? everybody? How can we yeah. – you know, we can't be – well, if you don't do it my way, we're not doing it kind of thing. You have to – okay, let's, let's make a step in the right direction here. Mm-hmm. Because I, mean, I like I said I don't I don't fully agree with either party. I mean, Republicans got got a horrible bad name with this last you know president here, um, and that that's just brought their whole cred way downhill. So it's hard for it's it's hard for me to think anything Republican is good just because of him. Yeah, but I don't disagree with with some of the base things, but I think they're going to extremes. You know, and that we need to get rid of that extremism on both both sides. There, we need a, uh, the middle ground. I need the, the, I need the middle party. <laughs> well, to be sure, and I know I've said this before, America needs at least two to three more parties. Mm -hmm. At least two to three. For starters, you know, because you need to completely cut the knees out from under the Democrats and the Republicans mm -hmm. because they've had this chokehold and because of the chokehold is because of how the corruption and all of the gridlock has occurred. Mm -hmm. Right. A third party would be, you know, a, a good start in the right direction, but it's not going to be enough to offset the other two. So you need, and then that's not even going to be able to fully, because, because the Democrats are fractured as mm -hmm. well. Yep. You have the progressives, and the establishment Democrats and the Republicans have, you know, the Trumplicans and the, <laughs> the evangelicals and the, you know, the, the, the whatever's, you know, and then they actually like the diehard core, actual legitimate Republicans are in there somewhere too. That could fracture into four different parties. Mm -hmm. Democrats could easily fracture into two to three. And then you get a couple of independent parties and you actually are forced into a situation where people have to come up with, uh, coalitions, you know, you actually have to work together. That would be amazing, mm -hmm. you know. And it just, uh, it's it's fantasy. It's why, fantasy. Unfortunately, why do we need these parties? We don't. They're not constitutional. Yeah. George Washington, the first president of the United States, for those of you who are not social studies inclined, um, said in his farewell address because political parties didn't actually—I mean, factions existed, but they weren't official political parties. He even said in his farewell address, do not form political parties. He said it more eloquently than that. But that was the message. Don't do the, the thing. And, and, they and then they the turned thing. around and within, a, within, within another presidential term or two, they, the political parties were starting to exist and they were mm -hmm. coalescing. You know, and then they realized that the best way to control is to block out everybody else. There should always be just two parties. <laughs> Fuckers. Yeah. Yeah. No. I'm thinking you know, five, at least five, six, seven, the more, the merrier, the more interests that are focused on the better be the more, cause those, those should be the political action groups are actual political parties. So, so it's like the, the, the speaker of the house, how did that come around if there wasn't really parties to begin with? Is that just um, the, a product of the evolution of the parties? I, I think that was an evolution of the government, to be honest. And I'm going to have to do some reading on that because I am not going to be 100% accurate in my assessment of this. But the Speaker of the House was was from the beginning a member of Congress who would help organize. It was basically a leader, a, a first among equals, to help make sure that Congress was being 
that the House of Representatives was at least being shaped and guided uh, and, and, so fo- and focused on a particular goal. Mm-hmm. You know, the, so the Speaker of the House was the person who would be, all right, what project are we working on? What bills do we need to be working on? Okay, I'm going to prioritize those and make sure that we're at least not just a jumble of hundreds of people just sitting around just shouting out what we think are ideas. So that was the whole thing. The Speaker of the House was a non-political thing. It was it was an actual parliamentary position that was to manage the House itself. Was it voted by the House members? Like yes, a, it's, it, always, it's always been. So, yeah, it's it was a, always, so it's a majority. So since whichever party is a majority, they, that's how I, they're, yeah. they're Speaker of the House. It's not really. Exactly. That's how it's evolved into. Yeah. But it was always basically, like I said, it was a first among equals. So everybody would say, okay, here, where are our choices for, for, mm-hmm. for Speaker of the House? Oh, these people? Okay, cool. Well, let's go with this guy. This guy mm-hmm. has our, rep- our respect. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's how it kind of worked hmm. at first. Did you hear about it all this time? You know, the whole majority the, you know, in the Senate, the majority of the minor, minority leader. Why do, why do they have a mi- minority leader? Why do, I mean, well, that's the stuff that's evolved as the political parties have been more cemented yeah. into our history. Right. So you it's know. like it's like these weren't part of the the institutions, but they become part of the institutions. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's like originally it was you know the vice president was the president pro tempore of the Senate. So mm-hmm. the vice president of the country is the speaker of the House for the Senate, mm-hmm. right? And that yep. was but but then the as the political parties crystallized and cemented themselves into place, then you have the majority leader and the minority leader and this leader and that leader and the whip and this that and the other thing. And that's, that's how it all kind of, I'm, you know, and I, I, I don't think I'm a hundred percent accurate because the structure of American government, I haven't studied it in a very long mm-hmm. time. I, I'm a history nut, but I'm, I might be a little off there. So yeah. forgive me listeners if, if I'm missing a point somewhere, but feel free to send me a link so I can read it. And, but, and but that we'll kind of there. makes sense. I mean, it, it's again, what, uh, something I never really questioned until until now, but it's just like, huh, you know, it's just, we, we, yeah, it, it, you know, if we didn't, so I was just trying to think, if we didn't have political parties, how would it work? And it worked pretty much the same way, except to get rid of some of that other extra crap that's there. You know, if there was no Republicans and Democrats, it's more like, okay, we have a, a, a group of a hundred senators and we're not sure how they're going to vote, which is, oh, good. They're, they're voting on their own versus what their party says. The whole party thing bothers me. Yeah. It, it is as well. It should. Mm-hmm. It bothers me too. It really does because I have seen, I have seen more people torn apart by religion and, and political parties than, than anything else on the, con- in the, on the planet. Yeah. You know, that's why the, what, uh, the, um, Robin Williams movie when he was, you know, um, he got, he got voted president. He was the, the speaker. Oh, the comedian, the talk yes. show host who got elected. Yeah. The man of the people or something like that. I, can't um, remember that I remember I, watching the movie. Yeah. And it, that was, uh, it's just the, the platform he went on was, was it's like, that's, that'd be, that's, that was great. I loved it. But, uh, I don't know. All I right. can only hope, I can only hope that somewhere along the line, things shift. Things change. I, I, I can only I, I, imagine that people are going to wake up from this nightmare somewhere along the line and realize that things need to be different. I hope it's soon. I, I agree. Because right now I feel like we're in an airplane that's heading down. Yeah. I mean, we got him out of office, but we don't have the right. Our, it, it's still, we don't have the right people in the office yet. We, we have, we got to, well, we got to get farther past him. Yes. Too, which is part of it too, because it's just too yeah, much. I agree. Too much leftover from him. I mean, it, that's it, a great way to put it. It, it. It's it is amazing what it impact he had in four short years or four long years, kind of. But mm. I mean, it is it's amazing and it's kind of sad it, and it's very sad at, at what he did in his time. Mm-hmm. Yes, you know he had he could have been he could have been great. No. I don't think, because it's not in his nature. No, if he was a different person. Well, there you go. Yeah, that I. If he was a different type of person, which he showed his colors immediately, if Mm -hmm. he's a different type of person and he had that same kind of personality, he could have done things great. I agree. You know, it, and that's why, 
you know, when he was first elected, I'm like, okay, give him a chance. You know, when, when he had to sit down with Obama, I thought, okay, maybe there's some hope. But then immediately after that, it was downhill. Yep. You know, but he could have been, yeah, so, so, you know, yeah. And it's, it's sad. It, it's, it's very sad how it, it turned out. Yep. And it's just, you know, it was four years of, oh my gosh, I don't believe this is happening. I know. You know it was, it, yeah, I'd wake up every day. What the hell do you do this time? You know, the, what did he tweet in the middle of the night? You know, it's, kind of, yeah. it, it, it's, and that was sad. Twiddler. It was, the, the Twiddler. Twiddler. You, it, it was, it's, it was sad. And uh, I, I don't know. It's, uh, yeah. I, I, I do fear for our country. I, I hope that we can become the United we, States again. Yeah. Well, we need to be able to come who we were always meant to be. And, and we're not, not even no. close at the moment. No, we're not anywhere close. It's going to take a lot longer than four years to do it. And hope yeah. uh, I'm worried about the, the midterm elections because, you know, the gerrymandering going to going on with the redistricting districting. Redistricting. Oh, and the voter suppression. Yeah. And the voter suppression. Yeah. They're going to do the, the Republicans are going to do whatever they can to cheat so they can get their, their power back. Oh, it's it's sad, and they're doing it with such balls they're just, out. They're not they're hiding just, it. They're just they're not it. even hiding it. They're just doing it, and people are loving them for it. And I don't understand that. Why? Yeah, and especially in the states that they're living in. Why are these people in the states that they're? Oh my gosh, I don't. They should be ashamed of themselves. No, they really I, should. I, I, I give you know some props to the Texas, you know Texas Texas uh, people that oh, are, yeah, the, the, the legislature. Left the state. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's. It's sad that that's what they have to do to to do something. Yeah, there's got. It, I, I I don't understand why we the way they people don't see this as a problem. Why th- nothing else can be done? Right. I don't. I don't. I just don't get it. Logical me. Logical mind me. Mm-hmm. I, I don't get it. Uh, that's why I couldn't be in politics. I'd be. I wouldn't be able to deal with this crap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Seriously, you ain't wrong. Uh, you ain't wrong at all, brother. Uh, it's time to wake up, folks. Spread the yes. word. It's time to wake up. It's time to wake up and be a part of the solution rather than being part of the problems. Ask questions. You know, it. it you know, nobody's yes. trying to destroy the country. It's honest. I mean, not even the not even the Republicans really are not trying to destroy the country. They just they're just greedy. They just want the power. They just want the, they can't see their ideology anymore. They just want the power, but they, they think they're going to be the, they, they're, they're the heroes of their own story. They feel righteous about it. You know, they want to do what they think is best. I get that, but they're going about it in such a horrible fashion. And it's like, why, why they're, are you treating people they're like They're trying this? to make it the best for a small group of people. Yes. That, yeah. That's the problem. They're trying, they're, they're very, they have yeah. a very they're narrow focus them. on yeah. what they're trying to do versus, you know, versus, versus the other side of the be, coin is trying to be, you know, a little bit too much in some way. Mm-hmm. So again, it's got to be. So there's got to be a. There's got to be a better, better ground to do it. And we need. We need to. We need to be one. One country again. We need to stop all this crap. You know. Yeah. Be part of the solution. <laughs> Don't be a dick. Don't be a dick. <laughs> Don't be a dick. You know. Oh, gosh. So, anyways. Anyways, my brother. That was a little more deep than I thought we would go. That's okay. But well, it's, that's what we're it, good at. It's an important, but it's an important stuff that's going on right now. I mean, this is, yeah. I mean, this is our future here. Yes, it is. You know, I, you know, like we started off this. I plan on, you know, I, I, I'm planning on being around for a long time still. Good. You know, whether I'm holding you know, you to that. fate takes, you know, does its thing, whatever, but my plan is to be around for a long time. So I want to enjoy this country and this is, we're not enjoying it right now. Nope. So we, we need everybody to work together, listen, figure out, you know, do what's actually good for the greater good. Don't just do what's good for the guy who tells you that you should do this. Right. Uh, you know, so don't, don't do, don't be narrow minded and work to say, I might be running for president. So I'm going to, do this because most people don't want this. So I'm going to make so they can't do it. And so what if my country, my, my state is the, has the highest hospitalization rate of any other state. It yeah. doesn't matter. People have their freedom, <laughs> except they don't have their freedom because I tell them they can't do something. <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> anyway. So, yeah. yeah. So today's, was... uh, today's Thursday. Yeah. Today's <laughs> Thursday. Are you going to pump? Are you going to push this out tomorrow? I'm going to try. It okay. Should be. Yeah, it should be. Might not be right at first thing in the morning, but you know. Uh, I'm going to go drink now. Yeah. <laughs> After that conversation. Yeah. We need, we need to drink heavily. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that was that was that was heavy, but it's like you said it's 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 important. It is. It is. It it's is important to talk really about important. these. Really important. It's important to learn. Mm-hmm. It, you know, like like we we talked about it before. I know I've mentioned this before, but that that Walt Whitman quote, you know, that Ted Lasso brought out. You know, the TV show Ted Lasso. J- Jason Sudeikis had this great scene playing darts where he brings up this Walt Whitman quote, and it's that's what stuck it in my head. It's, I had not thought about it since I studied Whitman when in college. Mm-hmm. Be curious, not judgmental. Hmm. Yeah, you know, I know we've talked about this before. I think we have at least, or I've talked about it with somebody. But be curious, not judgmental. You know, if you think you've got everything figured out. And you, you are dead certain on everything and everybody around you who's different is wrong. That's judgmental. Mm-hmm. You know, you, what are you going to learn from them? Nothing. Nothing because you're closed minded. You know, be curious. You know, you don't, doesn't mean you have to change your mind, but just seek to understand, seek to learn something new. You might surprise yourself mm-hmm. with 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 what you learn that you didn't anticipate yes. you know we've got a we've got a mutual friend you and i who you can't teach him anything because he knows everything already he is dead certain he is right he is he knows the truth of every situation if you disagree with him you're wrong that's judgmental mm-hmm. that's judgmental there's a whole big word out there. We're, we're curious about it. I yeah. Wanna, I want to know more about it. I, I'm fairly confident. I, I'm fairly well-versed in a couple of topics, but there are many that I do not know anything about. Please teach me. Mm-hmm. I may not agree with it. I may learn something about a situation and be like, ah, I still don't agree with that. That makes me uncomfortable. And that's me to deal with. But at least teach me. Yes. And you, and keep on finding more information about it. And eventually you might, you know, see something different or, yeah. You know. Be curious. I like that. Be George. Be curious, not judgmental. <laughs> Walt Whitman. Be George. Be George. <laughs> be curious, George. <laughs> Naughty little monkey. Yeah, that's, that's I mean, I, I that's one thing that, you know, we have in common. We're, we're always looking at new, you know, you got, you know, role-playing games. You're, you're, you're trying, mm-hmm. you're doing things. I'm, me reading books all over the place kind of thing. Mm-hmm, and it's mm-hmm. a, you're, I'm curious about what these, you know, they're bringing up, they bring up new ideas. You know, so a lot of them might be, you know, far fetched fantasy, fantasy, fantastical, fantastical, whatever, but you know, but they're, they're new ideas and just opens the minds and keep me curious. If I ever stop being curious in life, that means, it means my time here is over, you know, we're mm-hmm. doing doing a, a comic con, boy. We are curious about any about lots of stuff here, boy. Absolutely, because we'd be getting an education about a lot of things. Holy moly, more than I ever suspected. We're getting exactly we're getting <laughs> so much out of this. I mean, I, I I do definitely feel like I'm getting so much out of it because opened my eyes. You know, I we thought we knew something going in, but man, we did not know a lot going in. Right, right. <laughs> It has been an adventure. That is for sure. I'm um, glad I'm, I'm having that adventure with you. Yes. I mean, I'd be, I couldn't imagine oh, anything else. It's, and yeah, I'm so hoping we can get through this year. Uh, I, I really, cause I'm, I'm excited about this year. I think mm-hmm. we got a, a, everything good and it's going to be fun. And oh, I just, I hope we can. So it's going to be, uh, spread right, so here's- joy, spread curiosity. So I'm going to refer to a Facebook post that I, I, I put up July 10th. It's a collection of three, uh, three phrases. Okay. All right. And, and I will attribute their, them pro- appropriately. The first, the, these are your words of wisdom to close out this episode of Dan and Chris Save the World. Be a traveler, not a tourist. That was John Lennon. Okay. Mm-hmm. Be curious, not judgmental. Okay. Walt Whitman. Be alive. Don't just exist. That was me. 
I like it. Yeah. That's the Our Father of of the Church of the Wandering Dudes right there. Yeah. I mean, you know? Yeah. Those are, yeah. I, I don't know how to add to those, so that's good. Well, if you ever think of if, if you ever think of a way of a, a little phrase or something a quote that you've picked up that that would you think would fit, I absolutely throw that in there. Or add it to our Bible. Yes, that's it. <laughs> our so so friends, be a traveler, not a tourist. Be curious, not judgmental, and be alive. Don't just exist. We love you guys. We really do, and I can't wait to see all of you. I really hope to see you all soon. So, <sighs> on that note, good night, brother. Good night.